This is me last Saturday on a sunny day. Uh, I think it was March 27th, and I am transplanting our brassicas into one of our low tunnels. And what I do with all of our starts, a lot of them were two inch soil blocks. These happen to be ones that I potted up. I will dig the holes, measure them out, add some slow release bulk organic fertilizer, which you'll see me doing here. And then I gently place the transplant in. And when they're all dug and planted, I will give them just a little bit of water. And you seeing me here taking the newspaper pots off. These are compostable pots. You could choose to put those newspaper pots directly into your garden. We choose to then take that newspaper and add it to our compost heap. And so it will return to our garden at a later year in the form of compost. Totally up to you. Okay, so I just wanna show you how I secure these. It's supposed to be pretty windy and rainy for the next couple days. Um, there's a chance that these will pop off. These are just large binder clips that we pick up at um, an office supply store. I use bricks that we have found around the property. Um, and I've also started when we end up buying milk in um, plastic, I started using those as well as um, I just filled them with water. So we clip it um, on the top and um, sometimes I clip it on the sides, but to be honest with you, they end up popping off. So I'm just trying to use more weights on the side this year. And now that we um, have added this to the top, which is new this year, the way we've secured this, I'll show you that in a second. Um, I'm hoping that, um, well, we're going to see, I'm hoping that it just works out a little better. These have known to blow off in bad storms. Um, I've had to come out here while sick with a piece blowing in the wind. That's one of the reasons I don't do um, a, a hoop longer than 20 feet anymore because I find that um, the wind can get in there and really lift it like a kite. Anyone who has worked with an actual high tunnel knows this to be true. I've seen it happen with fr farmer friends. So this is how we're securing it this year. We um, drilled holes and we used a zip tie to fasten them together for kind of cross bracing. We didn't used to do this and snow uh, would um, cause them to sag. So um, this is kind of our new approach and it's a little bit of a trial and error. Um, haven't made it through a full season. We actually didn't have a lot of snow to test whether this was really effective or not. So um, we'll have to give it another year to really, really find out so anyway um so yeah that's what these look like and they are one inch pvc pipes schedule 40 um has to be really good quality i've had it snap on me when i drill holes in it and then we cut the end piece off so what we can do is on a nice day we can just come in here and open this up and let air flow in to whatever distance we want and then even when it gets even nicer out like for the tomatoes if they're still hooped i can even just take these whole ends off and um leave the rest of the hoop on and then it will still um have a little bit of solar gain but also a lot of airflow so um we find this to be kind of what works for us right now we've got all these doors cut so that's what we're using um, someday I'd love a greenhouse, but it's just not happening anytime soon. So we're just using what we have. All right, well, on Saturday, when I filmed the original portion of this, it appears that I did not actually, I was not actually filming and I had all of the stuff I had showed you, the inside of everything I had planted here. And um, I'm just not finding that um, five minutes of video. But what's happened since then is I have planted some peas yesterday. Today is April 3rd. Um, and I had to double cover all of this stuff in here because we had um, a low of about 20 last night. I think everything's fine, but um, sandhill cranes are flying over right now. Can you hear them? 
Oh, they make such a beautiful sound. Um, anyhow, I'm going to check some of our double cover and I'm going to show you what, what's going on in there. There's definitely bites on here. A little, a little worried, but there's a little bit of ice on the inside. However, so you can see what I did is I double covered this. So on top of the sheet on the outside, we covered everything. And um, those are beets. I think everything did okay. I'm actually not going to really mess with this because our high today is only going to be um, in the 30s. So any solar gains I need to keep inside here to keep it warm overnight. So we've got our garlic up. I put our garlic here this year. This is where I usually put flowers. It's on the end of our, um, that's our asparagus bed. And I thought I had put more garlic here, but it does not appear I did. These are our raspberries. And my husband, um, he comes through and thins them out and trains them up in late February every year. They look great this year. We're hoping for an even, strong, even stronger harvest than last year. We'll see how that goes. Hey, all right, welcome to our um, sunroom, piano room, grow room. This room gets jam-packed with our plants from middle, late February until middle to the end of April. Um, I've got, I'm gonna show you what I've got grown in here. So um, I'm gonna spin this around a little bit. We've got three different plant stands and these are plant stands that we made um, one a year over the last three years and I've got the design for this three shelf plant stand and I also discuss our lights on my website so if you haven't checked it out it's seed fork.com all right so we have three plant stands here with 10 lights and they have adjustable lights so we have hooks up here um, and these are all for light ballasts, which I'm going to try and show you here. Let's see if I can show you. So it's four fluorescent lights, half cool, half warm. Um, and we have an overabundance of tomatoes and peppers right now because I did a second succession. I sowed them twice. Um, I wasn't happy with the first succession um, with the soil blocks and how the, the plants were looking. So I sowed a backup tray, which in hindsight didn't need to do but if I didn't do it, I probably would be wishing I had it right now. And after that happened, I decided to try and do an experiment. And that's what this is with um, coconut coir versus peat and different ratios of those. And I'm growing um, alyssum, basil, radicchio, peppers, and um, brandy wines. Most of those, actually all those tomatoes and peppers are going to get donated. And I will use the rest in our garden. And I've got lots and lots of flowers that I've started already. These are some um, dahlias that I'm growing from seed from Botanical Interests. I've got straw flower, um, corn flower. These are all flowers that need a little extra time. A lot of my really favorite flowers like zinnia don't get started quite yet. These are gumfrina. And I've got some tithonia under here, which is great for the monarchs, as well as some tomatillos. And I have a few extra um, trays. There's one right here. Um, I've run out of room. So a tray there, and then another tray over here, as well as more tomatoes, eggplants, more peppers down here. Um, so I water these about every one to two days, really depending on how things are looking. I haven't watered these since Wednesday night, I think it's Friday. So they are all due for a watering today. My husband just went through yesterday and fertilized all of our blueberries for the year. So they are all set. And this is about it for the month. Not much going on in the garden still. End of April will look a bit different, even greener hopefully. And um, tomatoes should be in the ground and maybe even the peppers next month. So thank you so much for watching. And um, I will show you the garden again at the end of April.